Okay, today we're going to be seeing if we actually live in the matrix. So if you haven't been living under a rock this past week, you probably heard a sound bit that sounded like this. Laurel. Laurel. So this whole Yanni Laurel thing really upset me for some reason. I couldn't figure out why. It started making me question reality altogether. Whenever weird things like this happen in life, I've seen a lot of people mention that the reason it's happening is because we live in the matrix and this is just a glitch in the system. So first I want to talk about these glitches and what are the reasons why scientists say we actually could be in a simulation right now and what are the reasons why probably we're not in a simulation. So the Yanni Laurel thing should have made you question reality. If it didn't make you question reality, consider this sound bit that I just heard today. So it happens to be that Yanni and Laurel are hard to switch in your head. Some people can do it, but most people are stuck on one side or the other. But there are other words that are easier to flip in your brain, like this sound bit that lets you basically choose whether you hear brainstorm or green needle. So this is just playing the same audio bit over and over and over again. It's not changing in any way. But based on what you think you're going to hear, that's what you'll hear. So this audio illusion is even more disturbing than the Yanni Laurel thing because you're basically choosing your own reality. With the Yanni Laurel, different people had different realities, but with this one, you get to choose your own reality. For example, depending on how you see the shape of my mouth go, you'll hear a different sound. So this is going to be the same audio, but you'll hear different things in your head. Ba, 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 ba. So when you put all three pictures together, depending on what picture you're looking at, you're going to hear a different sound, even though there's only one audio clip playing. Ba, 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 ba. So the whole unsettling part about the gold and white dress and the Yanni Laurel thing and the green needle brainstorm thing is that everybody's reality is different based on what your brain is telling you. So multiple people can have the exact same inlet, but the output is different. So does this mean that there's actually a glitch in the system? Are we living in a simulation that has gone haywire? It's become an increasing trend online to attribute something to a glitch in the matrix whenever something really weird and unexpected happens. This has happened with the Oscars, this happened with the American election. Ever since weird results started happening, people started saying, okay, there must be something wrong here. We're living in the matrix or some type of simulation that has gone haywire. Well, before they patch this glitch, let me tell you some of the science behind why we may actually be living in a simulation. Okay, the first reason why we may be living in a simulation is that if we were in a simulation, you'd expect that there has to be some finite scale of everything. For example, in a game, there's these pixels and you can't get anything smaller than a pixel. So there's no information smaller than that smallest pixel in your game. So do we actually have a smallest length in our universe? Well, the answer is yes, and it's called Planck's length. And it's kind of curious how Planck came up with this length. Basically, he took the gravitational constant, the speed of light, and h, which is called Planck's constant, and taking the square root of h times g divided by c cubed, find that this is the Planck's length. And what that means is these constants that we use in physics only make sense if there is a smallest length. But this length is extremely small. It's 1.6 times 10 to the negative 36 meters. And that's so insanely small by any standard that it doesn't even make sense. It's basically zero, but there is still a limit. And so that means that there is a smallest value that anything can have. And because there's a smallest length, that means there's also a smallest unit of time, and that's called the Planck time. And the Planck time is 5.4 times 10 to the negative 44 seconds. So in our physical universe, based on all of our known physics, 
we do know that there's a smallest length and a smallest time. So basically our universe is pixelated in the same way that any game is pixelated. Another reason that we could be living in a simulation is that in games, there's a maximum refresh rate. So there's a maximum rate at which things can happen. So basically there's a speed limit to all games. There's a speed at which things can process. It's not just infinite. So if we're living in a simulation, we would expect the same speed limit. And we actually see exactly that. We have the speed of light. Things don't just happen instantaneously. It takes time for information to get from one spot to the other. So there's an overall speed limit for the information in our universe. And so that basically limits it so that if there were a program running our universe, it has a maximum finite speed that it can run. And yet another reason is that in games, everything doesn't render at once. So when you're in one specific room in a game, all the other information from the rooms doesn't have to be processed at that time only what you're seeing on the screen. And we actually see that same thing happen in physics. So one of the basic tenets of quantum mechanics is that nothing has a speed or a momentum until you actually observe it or measure it. And so particles don't actually have to choose a state until there's a measurement taken on them. And if we were living in a simulation, that would greatly cut down on the simulation power needed. And another big one that points towards a simulation is the fact that there was a beginning to the universe. Any computer game has to have a starting point. It has to start and then begin from there. And we see that same thing with the universe. There was a definite starting point that we call the Big Bang. And yet another reason is that in a computer game, everything that is created by the program is the same in every aspect. For example, in the original Mario's, every one of those little brown guys is the same as the other one in every single way. That's because they're created from the same base program, so there can be no difference between them. And that's actually what we see in our universe. At the fundamental level, there's absolutely no difference between one electron and another electron. So fundamental particles are identical in every aspect. And finally, this one's even more interesting. So in a computer game, when there's a lot of stuff going on and a lot of processing power needing to happen, your computer will slow down. That's because a lot of calculations are needed and your computer doesn't have enough power to do it all at once. So do we ever see situations like that in our universe? Well, if you've ever heard of a black hole, that could be what's happening. So when there's really massive objects, that means that there's a lot of particle interactions going on. So could it be that black holes have so many interactions going on so fast and so close together that the simulation that we're living in just doesn't have enough computing power and so time slows down near that area and eventually just blocks it out so that we can't even see what's happening in there because it would require too much processing power. But here's where it gets weird. So if we are actually living in a simulation, where is the simulation being processed? What is outside of our universe? So if you believe we're living in a simulation, that means there has to be something outside of here. That means something beyond our physical world that we can measure exists if we actually do live in a simulation. So if you do believe we're living in a simulation, you might actually be more religious than you thought. Because what you're saying is that there's something besides our physical world that we can't measure, we can't predict, that exists that is not here. And that other thing can interact with our world and cause glitches and cause things to happen and we can never know it's there. Some people have attributed that if we are living in a simulation, it's aliens running it. Some people even attribute it to it's God running it. So God is running this great big program that is our physical world. But are all of those reasons actually proof that we're living in a simulation? Well, there's a lot more problems to saying that we're in a simulation than you might think. Recently, it's been proven that a digital computer, no matter how powerful, could not simulate our current universe with our current physics, including quantum mechanics. Another problem with thinking that we live in a simulation is there's actually nowhere to stop where you think the life is being simulated. So let's say we believe there's some higher being simulating our universe. There's nothing to stop you from saying, well, their universe is also being simulated and their universe above that is being simulated. And to say something like that just doesn't make any sense at all. And that reason right there is why a lot of scientists say we are actually not living in a simulation. In fact, a lot of scientists give out their wild ballpark guesses. Like Neil deGrasse Tyson says, it's probably 50-50 whether or not we're living in a simulation. Whereas Elon Musk is certain that we're living in a simulation. So are we living in a simulation? Is Yanni and Laurel just a glitch in the whole matrix system that's causing us to realize that there's something out there that's simulating our entire universe? You decide. 
Hey everybody, thanks for watching another episode of The Action Lab. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did and you're not subscribed yet, remember to hit that subscribe button and hit the bell to be notified when my latest video's out and leave me any comments or questions that you have in the comment section. I'll try to get to them. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.